Mahara mai e te iwi and welcome back to The Verdict. Today we are discussing all things All Blacks v Argentina. We're going to dissect that with two case files today, but before we do, let me introduce you to our debating duo this morning, Goran Paladin. Rav, great to be back again. Thanks for the invite. You're welcome. <laughs> and former All Black Mills Molly Aina. Rav, great to be back. Looking forward to this debate <laughs> for sure. What, the third week running? Yeah, mate, we've... We're still here. Yeah, it's regular. either a case of he likes us or we can't find anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> it must be the latter. <laughs> I see you, you're well prepared. You know, you took the piss out of me last week with all my notes. Oh, you pretty notes. much copied me. Multiple well, pages. Exactly. Yeah. Just like the All Blacks, so I've adapted. <laughs> well, I will adapt. I will adapt. <laughs> Showing great depth, Mills. OK, before we get into these case files, we'll just give a little direction as to how this will play out. You will both be able to state your case, what side of the argument you will be on. You will then present your evidence to back up your statements. Then you can respond to each other's comments, but just make sure it's at a timely manner. OK, cool. Apply. Yep. All right, let's get into it. Case number one. The All Blacks suffered their first ever defeat to Argentina at the weekend. The question is, has the chasing pack caught up to New Zealand? Or have the ABs slipped off their pedals? Mm. Goran? Oh, look, I'm going to say that um, it's not a case of the chasing pack having caught up. Every now and then the All Blacks have maybe slipped a little bit, slipped off their pedals, as you say, and that you know, on the odd occasion that they lose, they're basically beating themselves. But uh, that, that's how I'm going to frame things. OK, Mills? I'm going to say that they have caught up. And there's, yeah, I suppose, just after the Rugby World Cup, there's a few new things. The cream rises to the top. This is what the All Black team is, and everyone's chasing them. Now is the time for them actually to, to come up with ideas to try and push away. But for me, definitely that everyone else is, is caught up. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like it. OK, who wants the honour to okay. take down their statement? I, I, I want to start things off just by asking, like, what, what actually constitutes the chasing pack? Because over time, we have suffered defeats at the hands of Australia, South Africa, England and France. That's, that's been a given. Mm -hmm. It's happened over time. But... Just recently, we've lost to Ireland in 2016, but you know that was born out of the fact that we didn't have our first choice locks. Uh, by the end of the game, we had, I think, Cody Taylor was playing as, as a flanker. We had Artie Severe on a wing. I think Jerome Kano started as a lock, and then Kieran Reid finished the game there. And the last time we played the Irish, we actually belted them in a quarterfinal at the World Cup. So I don't know if Ireland can be considered the chasing pack. And just because Argentina wins one game against the All Blacks, it doesn't make them our equal. And if they constitute the chasing pack, mm. then you've got to put the teams ahead of them on the rankings, at least before it changed just recently, mm. as part of the, the group that can beat the All Blacks. I don't see a time where Scotland can beat them, that Japan can beat them, that Wales can give them a go. I mean, when was the last time Wales beat the All Blacks? You're looking at the 1950s. So I mean, what, what actually constitutes the chasing pack? Are you asking me that now? Yeah. Oh, you didn't finish the argument. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what constitutes the, the chasing pack. And that's everyone else. Because the legacy and what the All Blacks have created and, and, the, and, the, and the winning percentages they have over the years makes everyone else the chasing pack. Now, I know you've spoken about, you know, uh, your teams that have beaten the All Blacks and, uh, and they haven't beaten the All Blacks. There's only two. Two left to do. And that's, that's possibly going to happen, I mean, apart from probably Italy. Okay, Scotland and Italy are the only teams that haven't beaten the All Blacks. Okay, so... That will happen one day, but the legacy and what the All Blacks have done and, and, and the way they've gone about it in every test match, and you know, I talk about the winning percentages, you know, they're, they've been successful and that's what makes everyone else chase them. They chase them in terms of the, the skill set they have, they chase them in terms of the, of the fact that, uh, you know, um, how they, you know, the, the, the players that they actually in, introduce and the game plans they have. So everyone's chasing and the, and the pressure that these guys are on to go out there and win week in, week out, you know, no one else can actually, has actually got that pressure. So I welcome the fact that Argentina can go away now and say, well, we've beaten the All Blacks, but can they back it up the following week against the Wallabies? That's where the All Blacks are so great. So when you look at sort of the pack that's chasing, to me, it's everyone else. And when you, in the last couple of years, they have caught up. You know, when England beat you like, like they did in, in uh, you know, last year at the Rugby World Cup, Argentina have now done it. They've sort of, you know, for a number of years... They've threatened to, to beat us, even over in Buenos Aires when you know we won in the last couple of um, couple of minutes with a try to uh, you know Ray, Razor Robinson. They've, they've been there thereabouts. Now that's happened, they can get that off their back. Records are made to be broken, and that, that's one of the records that's, that's, that's now broken. But the Irish team, I welcome that. They're another chasing. I, I do think they're a chasing pack. You can't go from winning in Chicago and then winning at home, and then all of a sudden, oh, 
We've been beaten by 40 points. You're only as good as your last game, Mills. <laughs> oh, <I'm>, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right. they're in it. They're, they're chasing, uh, okay. all right? So they've got to actually try and get to the level that the All Blacks are. That's mm. why I think they've caught up. The key now for the All Blacks is how do they evolve their game? How do they go from, you know, the, when they've lost to England, they've now lost to Argentina, they've got a, you know, a few new faces, definitely a, few, uh, 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 a different coaching panel. Mm. How do they evolve that in terms of, okay, we've got to come up with new ideas? You know, we we possibly imp imp implemented what well, we did the, the kick um, the kick pass game, you know things off um, you know, set piece. Where we po possibly haven't evolved is adapting the other nations' game plans. Um, you know, being, being prepared, you know, to play that sort of you know boring type game that um, you know a lot of people would say it's not boring. It's winnable rugby, and so we've got to come to a balance when we say, well, we're not getting anywhere now. How do we turn that around and say, well? Let's play their game. Let's play their style. Be prepared to kick. And the problem that we've got here in New Zealand, we're so expansive. You know, super rugby, it's flash. You know, if you do this, you've got nice flash boots, you're fast. Everything's sped <laughs> up. You know, we've got to be prepared to actually adapt. And that's possibly where this next all-black coaching, um, you know, team have, have, have got to get to. I think I've made my mind up on this one. And I'm going to go with Mills. Oh, I'm going to go with Mills yes. because... I thought I was going to lose that one. I do believe that... You know, world rugby, the future is bright with a lot of teams now. And I think in the case of Argentina, it was a case of cracking that All Blacks code up against their top flight team. I mean, we lost to Wallabies the weekend before, but that wasn't against... <laughs> she says that. Uh, <laughs> wasn't, that wasn't against, you know, the, the A side that we saw up against Argentina. And I really felt that Argentina's game plan got the better of the All Blacks. And not a lot of teams can say that. So... Kudos where kudos is due to Argentina, and I feel that they rose to the occasion, and it shows the future is bright. God, how did they, though, Mills? How <laughs> did Argentina rise to the occasion, yeah. given that they were without international rugby for more than 400 days, yeah. and then the, their first hit out against the fantastic All Blacks, and they put in that kind of performance. Yeah, Just, I, it defies I, I, belief. Yeah, and I've been having a couple of days to think about it now. Mm. I mean, at the time, you're like... Where did that come from? You know, it was just absolutely, it's amazing an achievement. What they've done and the way that, that, yeah. that they've gone about it, mm. considering the no game, has been in isolation for six weeks, and then the game plan they went into it with. You know, they rattled the All Blacks. And yeah. so this has got to go down as, you know, one of the, I suppose, the the, the better defeats in you know, the All Blacks. Well, well I shouldn't say it's probably the bad, bad uh, way to put it, but the way that Argentina, Argentina did it was mm. just absolutely amazing. Yeah. 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 One word springs to mind, and that was heart. Mm. And you could see that from the captain when he had those words with the referee. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm playing for my country. I'm playing yeah, for my country, yeah. so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even. <laughs> Have you ever done that? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> You've got no idea what it's going through in my mind right now. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> kudos to them for that. Yeah. Kapai. And koa e ware ware. Koto, don't forget, if you have anything you'd like to say about this argument, drop us a comment below. Let's get into case number two. We're sticking with this game. Yeah. Okay. But we're now in the final term of the sporting year. Do the All Blacks get a fail on their report card? Mills, what do you think? Well, for me, really, it's a no. You know, I think considering uh, the year that we've had and um, especially around COVID and things like that, I, I definitely think it's, it's been a no. We've, we've, uh, we've blooded some new young young blood in some precious situations. And for me, really, I think uh, if you can put the Bledisloe Low Cup away, um, hopefully win this weekend, then, you know, it's not a fail to me. Okay. At the risk of uh, making enemies everywhere, I'm going to say that, uh, yeah, it, it, you can give them a, a fail on their report card to date. And um, I'm, I'm going to try and support my argument using statistics and, and looking back through history, Rav. Oh, OK. Yeah. Like OK, we're, we're getting deep into those notes. All right. <laughs> well, it's, it's not going to be a case of, oh, the All Blacks lost two games, this shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, totally. like, what do you learn from that? Yeah. And what do you achieve? Absolutely nothing. Yeah. So, yeah, let, let's look back through time and, and see how the 2020 breed compares mm. to other um, yeah, iterations fair. of the All Blacks. Mm -hmm. Okay, who wants to kick us off? Mel's going on first. So I'm not going to dive into the stats because I will. No, I, I'll dive into. I'm like the Argentinian captain. I'm going to go into a pure heart and, and, and say, you know, 
I don't think it is a fail. You know, if I look at it in, a, in the, the bigger picture and the biggest uh, scheme of things, I'll start really with the, with the Super Rugby Aotearoa, which is now going to be Sky uh, Super Rugby. Uh, you know, I just think the way that that, uh, that was played and, um, you know, the success that had, yes, it was the only rugby being played, but explosive, it was dynamic, you know, it was something fresh for everyone globally. You know, you lead on to, to where the All Blacks were, um, they didn't start as well as perhaps they, they should have. But again, my point is we blooded some new some new blood. And when I when I mentioned that, we, we put them in pressure situations. You can't you can't um, you know uh, teach or or learn that off the field. And when you look at that draw that drawn game in, in, in Wellington, when you'd be able to bring on young guys, um, you know, to finish the game off, you know, that there was pleasing. Then to lift again and go and, and win uh, Eden Park the following week and win convincingly. To go then to Sydney and just blow them off the park. Now we're getting into a bit of momentum then, okay? So you'd have to say 17 years. It's a, you know 17 years since they've won that Bledisloe Cup back. That Bledisloe Cup is you know pretty important to New Zealanders and to the All Black team. So that's a big tick for me. You know that's done and dusted. Um, the next thing is the Tri Nations. Do we really? Do we, is, is there you know a really a big thing on the Tri Nations given that South Africa aren't even there? Now, if it was a championship in South Africa were there, then I'd be a little bit you know more concerned. Okay, so all right, there's some learnings. The learnings are okay. Well, we've got to get a team, um, you know, two teams that can lift to that level, you know, week in week out, and that's what we didn't have at, at Suncorp. We didn't have that, um, you know, when we came back to our the, the next team that you know they had that week off. We didn't get to that level, but for me, really, what was the, the pleasing part is, if you look at the team as a whole, we still haven't established our, our first team. You know, you look at the front row. Have we row, not? Look at the front yeah. row. No, you look, look, look how, how young that is. Lomax, you know, first year, really, as an established all back. We're still sort of toing and throwing about off a toing a fussy or, you know, Kautu Nukuwafi. You know, who goes there? You know, you still got guys, you know, sitting back at home that, uh, you know, Angus Ta'avau and co. So, you know, who goes in? You look at the locking department. You know, White Lock's been here for a while. You've got Tupo Vai now that's, that's, that's throwing Barrett. You know, to the Lucys. You know, here, here's, a, here's that, that whole sort of, you know, Hoskins to Tutu, you know, Adi Savia, you know, Sam Kane's even now under pressure. You know, and then you move out. You know, do I need to talk any further? Right to your, your midfield. We still haven't established our midfield and our, and our outsides. And we're the pleasing Is it not is, good Hugh and Leonard Brown? Well, uh, well, is it is it now after we've, we've, we've had a loss? You know, I mean, we've yeah, still got, we've right. still got, you know, Rico Ioane that could sit there and be the X Factor guy that can come. So mm. we haven't established that, you know. And then you add to that the talent that's in Wider Ten Cup. There is so much talent there. So where the coaches have got to get to is the fact that we've got to get, you know, two or three teams before this next World Cup. Well, definitely two teams that are capable of actually going out there and being at that same level. And so that's where I think, you know, we've ticked off the Bledisloe Cup. Um, yeah, if we if we had come out of this sort of Tri Nations and, and Bledisloe having dominated um, these teams in the first year, I'd be a little bit worried because you know we haven't played the English, or we haven't played the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah. This now puts that rock under you know the back on, you know under, underneath your towel. It makes you think, okay, we're not we're not quite there. We've got a long way to go, and this will only make us hungrier. See, I, I worry that we haven't put this Australian side and the Argentine side to the sword by now. Because um, looking at the statistics, this is one of the, the worst years in All Blacks rugby in the professional era. If we go back to 1995 and, and all the way through to 2020, there's only one season of All Blacks rugby where they've had a 50% or worse win rate. And that was 1998 under John Hart. And they lost five matches in a row that year. Um, the All Blacks were a great side, but the teams that they came up against in that, in that trot, they were legendary. You, know, you look at the Wallabies of the time. In 98, they had guys like John Eels, Gregan and Larkin with a 9-10 combination. You had Matt Burke at, at 15, Joe Roffs on a wing. You know, like the list goes on and on. South Africa, meanwhile, they had Rassi Erasmus in their squad. They had um, a young Bob Skinstad. They had uh, Fenta. They had Montgomery. You know, these were quality teams of, of the time. Whereas where I look at the Wallabies of today... You know, they're basically learning how to play, handing out test caps under Dave Rennie at the moment. And Argentina, we, we just didn't know what they were going to provide. Uh, they were immense, but after 400 days without rugby, like, come on. They had, they had nothing under their belts before the match. And so that's why when I look at the All Blacks and, you know, you've got Bowden Barrett, who's a two-time World Player of the Year, Richie Moonga, who just, you know, Super Rugby's been his plaything for many, many years now. You know, they've got quality players. I expected them to 
to do better than what they did. And you know, when you look at the statistics for this year, they've played five, they've only won two, that's a winning percentage of 40%. So for only the, the second time in 25 years, they're dipping under sort of that 50% win rate. And um, that, that to me, that, that signifies a fail rate. I'm actually, I'm quite on the fence about it because I don't want to say that the All Blacks have failed, but I think they get a B or C. Hey, that's still but pass, I don't mate. know. C's, but... mate. The C's get degrees. Did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a pass. Okay, well, then, it's, hey, then that's a pass. C's get degrees. Oh, okay, all right. I just... <laughs> I think there's a lot of factors that we have to, you know, look at as well. The All Blacks, I mean, Australia get to play in front of their home crowd Every game, Argentina, that crowd was mental. There was a sea of blue and white there. The All Blacks don't get that um, part of it. Um, the dynamic of COVID and all these sorts of things, there's a lot of adversity that's gone into preparations. Have they perhaps played a lot of rugby in Super Rugby? Has playing New Zealand teams back to back to back been a lot for the All Blacks to sustain and then to still be fully fit and dominant in an international series? Perhaps, we don't know. Um, but they definitely have to work on something, like you said, Goran, something has to change against Argentina. Even if they don't win, something has to change in terms of that game. Mm. So in saying that, I can't say that it's a fail, especially with a game up in the air. Oh, well done, Mills. I'm on too. <laughs> we'll give you the week <laughs> off next week, eh? So, oh, mate. That's, oh, yeah, <laughs> don't come back. Yeah, standard. <laughs> Sorry, Goran, I get to keep all my friends. I'm, too, I'm <laughs> tired now. I'm tired now. I'm tired of winning. Gee, I'm tired of winning. <laughs> what, did I win last week? No, I didn't, did I? No, I think uh, we split won. it, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I fired back. I fired back yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. The comeback is real. <laughs> well, that's it for our, our debating. So let's get into some general question for Mills. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what have you got for us today, Ray? <laughs> what have we got today? Bit of overtime for you. You don't mind? You didn't prep me on this, did you? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> but that's part of the fun, you know? Just, we we get like reaction. an honest response. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah. The look of terror oh. on your face. <laughs> I almost relaxed a little there's bit. No you know? There's no trust here. <laughs> OK, first question, Mills. Is it fair for Ian Foster to cop the blame for the defeat? Uh, look, I think if you're the all-black coach, yeah, you're, you're, you're scrutinised. You know, I mean, it's you know a, a job that's um, possibly, you know, almost on par with the Prime Minister, you know, when, when it comes to New Zealand sport, because we love the All Blacks so much. And the, the, our legacy, I mentioned it before, the legacy has sort of provided that, you know, mm. that expectation. So whenever you go into that role, it comes with responsibility. It also comes with, you know, the added pressure. And so, uh, yes, I agree with that, um, you know, there, there's a lot of people hurting, uh, but also, you know, you've got to remember too, you know, you've got to put things in perspective, you know, in the way they've gone about it. What's he actually doing? The key thing now when you're in, and I've been in teams, that have struggled at that. The key thing now is he's got to go away and actually say, well, was this really the plan? Is it was just, you know, I was, I was prepared <coughs> three or four months ago that this could possibly happen. You know, what do I need to tweak? Um, if it wasn't, then, you know, he's got to actually look down and say, well, how can we change these sort of mm -hmm. things? You know, and I, I take it right back to where, you know, the 2007 Rugby World Cup when we lost. Man, that was the worst time ever. But the coaching staff, they... They got together and they said, well, we can't do the same things. You know, we've got to actually start. We, we've got, they've got a lot of guys from different sports, at the high-end sports, to actually say, well, what are some of the, how do you, how do we go out there? Because it was pressure that was, that was killing us, you know. Um, how do you actually embrace that pressure um, in terms of the decisions you make on the field um, and, and things like that? So Ian Foster, and, and what came of that was, okay, you wanted to get to a stage, even the SAS guys that we brought in, and mm. spoken about it. Now, their pressure is different because the consequence of that is you don't get another week. No. You know, um, so we had to try and, um, you know, uh, you know, come up with, the, with ways to do that, you know, um, you know, was, where's the contingency plans and things like that. Now, if you don't do not do that and don't, you know, appreciate the, some of the stuff that didn't quite go right, then you'll never learn. So Ian Foster's job now is to be able to make sure that his team, I say team, and I mean his staff, and his, his coaching staff, not as just just the coaching guys, but all the medics and things like that, his mental guru, um, uh, Gilbert and Oka, all on the same page. And then you've got to make sure your, your players um, are right in behind you, right in behind the, the task that you have. And the difficulty, but the difficulty now is you can go in there, you're under pressure, four million people after you, they want you to they lose your job and things like that. It's so easy to go, okay, we've got to do this thing right, we've got to do this thing right, we've got to do this thing right. And now you've got, 50 things, 50,000 things you've got to get right yeah. and you haven't really prioritised. 
Mm. Um, so the key thing for him is really prioritising what that looks like. Um, is it fair that he cops it? <sighs> it's a hard one. I think it's a, it's a collective effort. Um, you know, there's some responsibility on the players. Um, but unfortunately, in New Zealand, when we're um, that passionate about rugby, you know, you know someone's got to take the blame. Yeah, he's and at wrong. the moment, he's, he's copping it. Okay. Well, we've spoken a lot about emotions and what these results have meant to us <laughs> as former players and fans. So on the back of a certain tweet, Mills. Mm. Did you see it? Did no. you see a certain tweet about... I, I, don't, I don't do Twitter. I don't, I don't <laughs> yeah, but do you watch the news? Because you would have seen that one tweet of, like, Keith Quinn. Yeah. He watches the oh, bird Yeah, so I'll talk about that. Yeah, 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 there you <laughs> go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So in relation to that tweet, is it okay for men to cry in rugby? I think it is. Yeah. I, I don't think there should be any issues with crying in, in rugby. I think uh, gone are those sort of days, right? And I possibly back in the days, would, you know, they probably would have wanted to cry. There wasn't really, you know, there was that, you had to be a hard man back then you didn't should, couldn't show emotion you couldn't show any tears you had to be able to fight you know you go to those dark places and sort of give some um you know you know a couple of sort of cheap punches yeah i probably want to survive as an all back then to tell you the truth i would wimp it <laughs> off but oh, i think it is i absolutely think it is and then you, you've got to look at it also the argentinians them crying that's 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 their tradition you know they're, they're, they're passionate people they don't mind crying they don't they don't you know it's, it's part of the culture you know, to show some of that emotion. And it's, it's weird because us as Kiwis, we've taken a very long time to adapt to that. Mm. You know, even, you know, you, you look, at the, look at the crowd and the way, um, you know, their, their bench players and also the guys in the stands and they are just dancing in the air and things like that. You know, we, we never show that. You know, we've, we've taken a long time to be able to, to, to come out and, you know, you go to games and all we can do is clap our hands twice and say All Blacks. Whereas, you know, the rest of the world, you know, they, they, they're right out there. Um, when it comes to crying, absolutely. Uh, I think it's it's all right to show your emotion. In the 20th century, gee, times have changed. Yeah. You know, it's it's not like the good old, good old days. And um, you know, where you had to be a hard man. There's some hard men out there um, that that you know, if you are seen crying, mate, you just take your hat off to them because it doesn't make them any you know uh, less physical or less hard. Mm. You know, they, it's it's all right to show emotion. Yeah. How often did you cry in the black jersey? <laughs> No, like uh, either on the field or mate, in the sheds afterwards. I, I had or... to talk about that. 2007 was was tough. Mm. You know when you when you know when you woke up the following day and you knew that you dream, that it was it was over. Yeah. You know that I took that really hard. Mm. Um, and, and, poss and probably winning it in 2011, uh, although I didn't play, um, and I was in the stands watching. Um, it brought up a whole heap of of emotion, um, you know, from all those failed World Cups. But also the fact that you knew that your time was up as an All Black, and mm. that was that was um, probably the, and also my hundredth cap. I think um, you know, although I didn't bore my eyes out, you know, it was it was a, definitely a lot of emotion there because of the journey that I'd, I'd taken to go there. So um, yeah, there were a few there were a few times, but reflective of the fact um, you know of, of the stuff that I'd done and, and why it made it so so special and the hard work that you'd put, you'd, you'd put in. Um, so yeah, definitely through those three moments for me mm. possibly would have been more, but it's a long time ago now, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Not that long ago. Pretty parched since then. Yeah. What about well, you, Gordon? When I went back to my room and started crying because I didn't make the team. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do wrong, Coach? <laughs> we cried in front of Ted. Please, Ted, please. <laughs> oh, all right, mate. Well, maybe should have done that. I'm going to get selected. <laughs> when did I last cry? Yeah, when did you last cry? Um, it was probably just like the other week, actually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I've got like a little um, 10 month old boy and he's like yeah. changing all the time and oh. you know, it just, yeah, it makes you get emotional. And yeah. so, yeah, yeah I, I cry pretty much every week. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Aww. Not in public though, because I'm so staunch. <laughs> that, but that, that's something that needs to change, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like, it's okay for us to, to exhibit emotion at the end of the day. Be human? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're not all us. sort of lumps of wood. Well, and on that high, we will call it a day, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your argument. Mills, always a pleasure for you to join us in studio. Right, well, so I'm, well. I'm going to love that week off. Thanks, guys. <laughs> we'll call you back, mate. We'll call, you'll be Same back. time next week. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. As for Goran and I, we will be back next week, same time, same desk, putting everything in sport on trial. Matiwa.